What's going on, creators? I just want to get on here and uh, bring everybody back to now. <laughs> Appreciate y'all being here and vibing with me for a bit. And today, I'd like to talk a little bit about transmuting thoughts of grief, so thoughts of sadness, despair, um, thoughts of loss, and, and and all those types of um, you know similar types of vibes. Especially if you know someone you love just died, um, you know friend, family pet animal you know I just lost my dog a couple days ago you know and it's the same kind of um, thoughts of sadness and despair that kind of crept in when my dad died on a couple months ago um, but there, there's a technique that has been really helpful for me and not really getting sucked into cycles of despair and depression and, and all that kind of stuff that can accompany those types of things and that has to do with you know being super present and realizing that in the here and now right now the loved one is still alive and is um, part of the one consciousness feeling states of joy feeling states of um, you know, heaven and one of the easiest ways to start to connect with that energy is to start using your imagination to imagine those kind of imaginal acts um, incorporating with your loved one you know kind of almost from their perspective you know if you could like kind of be in charge of like their afterlife experience and this is just to get your mind moving in the right direction uh, you know if you were in charge of what their next moment would be would you give them a joke would you give them some adventure to to spend the next 15, 20 minutes chasing down some rabbit hole that's just fun and exciting. Um, you know, and the more that you start to give to another, due to the connect nature, because we're still connected through God, through the subconscious, through the quantum field, through however you want to say this, this connected divine thing, um, you know, their essence is still connected with the one here and now. Because as long as God exists, so does your loved one. You know, because you know, we are expressing words, you know thought and form and and everything around us is an expression of thought and form you know part of letting go of our old mindset is looking at everything as separate things oh it's like oh that's a that's a plant and that's a that's an ice cube and that's a that's a bucket of whatever and that's paper you know and, and having all these little labels and these little stories that are corresponding to um, our judgment of things instead of realizing it's all part of God's mind is this, this, this hologram, you know, so however you want to, to visualize it, say it, experience it, you know, it's all part of, you know, in, in one of the biblical verses, you know, it's like in him we we move and have our, how's that go, it's in him we, we live and move and have our being, you know, it, it's it's kind of a, like a, a verse that can be looked at as like part of like the, the hologram, the quantum reality, the multiverse, whatever you want, you know, all these labels and words to describe the here and now, but like, um, looking at like everything as being part of uh, our creator on some level because without him nothing was made so it's like everything that's made is made by our creator you know and, and and looking within as being the location of our creator according to Jesus you know it's like the, the teacher is within you know so our connection to that divine knowledge and truth and and, um, and holy whatever you know all of that can start to be unpacked by going within through prayer ask believe receive so it's like if you want to know the answers to something if you want some help and um, getting some understanding um, ask um, that's important but also believe that you're worthy enough to receive an answer you know because part of our old mindset likes to um, make you feel like you're not worthy of even being communicated to or talked to or loved or you know any of these types of things that um once you get past that, you realize how ridiculous those are. But, you know, looking at whatever happens through um, your imagination as being part of the tool to connect with um, the oneness, you know, you realize what you give to another, you also give to yourself because we're all one through this 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 connectedness and so you know start imagining when when you first get a thought of maybe despair of loss um, that you're separate from the, the loved one realize that you're not separate for one you may not see their form in the here and now yet you know but um, what you can do is start to use your own consciousness your own um, imagination uh, which Neville Goddard would, would describe as being Jesus you know which you know, that's his opinion but you know the Bible does say that um, Jesus Christ is within you so it's like 
okay, if, if, if that's true, then, then where, where, where is that? You know, what, what's already inside that I don't really know what's going on? You know, our consciousness is a big mystery. And so um, looking at, you know, some of these things that are going on within that we just kind of just go, oh, it's just the subconscious that, that creates entire realms every night with strangers that you've never met and accents and language that you've never heard before. You know, and, and just like all of this crazy shit going on and just the, the dream space that we spend a third of our existence in um you know but through actually practicing these techniques of being mindful and being aware and also being um aware of letting go of fear by facing it growing your faith in um the promises of god being true and that you can be do and have anything that god has already blessed you right now is like the only reason you don't experience the blessing is because you push it away with your resistance and this old kind of mindset of separation but you know when whenever um but whenever we're confronted with some of these things from the, our old kind of programming you know it's important in that same moment to realize that that the problem and the solutions coming here and now is it's not coming to, you know it's not coming 10 minutes from now so the the problem and the solution is the same time so if the problem comes of feeling despair feeling loss feeling sadness um instantly switch that around and start thinking no, they didn't die. They were born. They're into their, they're, they're into this new space. And um, what do I wish for them now? Start extending love to them. You know, whatever it happens to be. You know, for like my dog. You know, it's like you know she's connected with the other dogs that I used to have, and that they got good food and they're in a, a fun environment that they're able to chase shit and like whatever their heart wants to do. You know, it just happens that they can just be that free. And like in doing that you can almost instantaneously you know feel um it affecting your state of mind right away i mean it's it's instantaneous as you w desire that for another and, and you put it on in consciousness and assume that that's just it's going to happen you know it's just going to be like that you know even more so you know, it's like this is my limited imagining i will I'll ultimately leave it up to infinite intelligence that that can see beyond my 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 awareness at this point you know but at, as where I'm out, this is what I think that that would be an awesome uh, mountaintop for them. And you instantaneously start to feel that. You know, that that's one of the, the easiest and fastest ways to realize that, um, that even through death of the body, the, the soul and the essence is still something that you can connect with. And as you connect, you know, realize that, um, that, that that individualized aspect has now merged into the one. And it's almost like you know, the mask is pulled off and they were expressing a, an idea in form. And that, that as long as you kind of hold maybe a memory or, or mm, an awareness of them, you can always connect with that essence because they're, they're still just part of the one that's, that's not going anywhere. You know, and so as you put your attention on that, you know, a lot of times then you'll start to see that being reflected then in your perception. You know, you might be thinking of a loved one. You know, maybe you imagine something very lovely for them to experience or you just want to maybe connect with them, you know, in like the, the new form. You know, as you put your attention and your awareness on just their essence of their, you know, uh, their being, a lot of times you'll start to, you know, and, and you don't want to just be sitting there looking for it. You know, it's just like you, you make the intention and then you drop it. You let it go. And, and as, as you think of them, you know, through ways that you don't even really think of, you start getting these little signs, these little nods, these little synchronicities. You know, uh, you could be thinking of like maybe their name and next thing you know, it's like someone says it on TV <laughs> or it's like you're like be standing in a gas station and like, you know, somebody just gets their phone out and they're like, hey, and they say the person's name or something. You know, it's, just, it's like these little nods, these little, um, <clears throat> yeah, these little things that just, you know, make you kind of connect with this this energy and this new way of kind of looking at um, creation through through this lens, you know, of connectedness and oneness. You know, another thing you can start to do, you know, if you start to drift into, uh, you know, maybe you start to, like, remember aspects of like their final days that were really disturbing or just like brutal or gruesome or you know any of these types of things and maybe you weren't able to um 
you know, process that at the time. Maybe just, you know, puts you in a state of fear. You know, those fears exist to be conquered. You know, and on the other side of that fear is a healing that will take place as you face it. And, and, and you, you know, you'll feel the uncomfortableness of that energy of fear. But once you realize that it, that only exists within your own mind, it doesn't exist outside of you, this fear, then you can begin to not create this big... Um, uh, this big obstacle with it you know it's like oh this big mountain to climb with facing this fear once you realize all fear is just it's only one energy you know and you can use that same energy look at it as almost being like a neutral energy but you know you have your judgment about what you're thinking you have like a, an illusion that something's separate from you and that's it's separate from this process of awakening you know so um as these imaginings of these relivings of the past confront you in the present, you know, start to look how you can revise the meaning of what you saw. You know, because part of part of what is fearful about it is a lack of understanding and confusion. And so, um, the easiest way to start to get understanding is just to ask for understanding. So, you know, through prayer again, ask, believe, and receive understanding. So it's like ask um, for the understanding for one. Um, believe that you will be answered and you will get the understanding through a bridge of incidents that you might have to be led through some shit so that you really know you know it's like I could tell you how to play the guitar and what that feels like it's like but until you pick it up and play it, it it's not really the same kind of knowledge and so you know not to put you in a state of fear of like oh I'm gonna be led through a brutal and, and terrifying experience but you know, it's it's more about through consciousness, through um, through that that mental journey of um, unpacking it, asking for you know, because the ego mind has a definition for everything, you know, and and that def and and it's kind of base error is that it's somehow separate from you, and that fear is and and it's separate from God, and it's it's fearful, and you need to be reacted to it to keep yourself safe. But in doing that, unconsciously, um, listening to that mind actually draws these unsafe and fearful situations to us because, again, there, there's only one energy. And so it's like you, you're either reacting and unconsciously creating more things to be fearful, mainly with the mental stories and the narratives that you're telling yourself, and then you know, you're feeling these corresponding uh, uh, energies, your feelings, that are that are probably just all over the place because you're believing things in error and they don't feel good. Use that time to um, become still, ask God, and you know you might get a lot of resistance that comes up at first and in, in, in flashbacks of the shit that you've seen. Well, instead of sitting there and running from them, you know, ask for a higher perspective. Ask if there's a different way to interpret that. You know, I'm projecting a lot of. Um, oh, that must have been painful, or uh, that must have been, uh, you know, scary, or that must have felt like this, but but not really understanding what was going on in that other than the other's consciousness then too. You know, it, was, it reminds me, and not to make make comparisons like animals or, or people are like animals, or animals are like people. You know, it, but again, that projection even goes on that stuff too. You know, I was like. Um, is the winter time where I live, and we had two ducks at the time, uh, along with a bunch of chickens, and they're all raised together, and it was um, cold enough that there was a thick layer of ice on their little kid pool, and basically the ducks, they, I mean, they would love that thing. I mean, they would be in that water all freaking day long, just flopping around in it and just horsing around in it, and they just loved it. You know, it's weird that it was just like. I don't, it was almost, you know, it's like, it's weird that, that that's how, you know, like, ducks to water, like, that cliche is real. <laughs> but, like, <clears throat> when the winter hit, you know, it kept freezing up, and I would bust it so that they would have some fresh water to drink. And next thing you know, I see these ducks just standing in the fucking ice water, freezing outside, and then they just, like, standing in it. It's like, what the fuck? Are you serious? What's wrong with you? You because know, I was projecting if I were to stand in that water, um, I would have gotten frostbite, you know, in probably a couple of minutes. And then having to get out of that water and then stand on snow and ice and have to be outside the rest. Of, I mean, the whole thing was madness to me. But, like, 
they were just that was just normal for them and so you know sometimes we can start to and like take our thoughts and beliefs and assumptions and uh, it's like well we see it outside of ourselves and we assume that our what we think is what the other is thinking you know and so you know where we could see someone like there's been times where like i've gotten up and then just like hobbling around because of like like pain in my my hips and stuff but and, and people may have looked at me like i was like tormented and suffering and everything you know it's like my wife is like really encouraging me to get get them replaced and everything you know but like to me you know i can understand why she thinks that because you know sometimes when you're like hurting and dealing with chronic pain and shit you know you would be these mental narratives of like oh i'm a victim and, and oh you know i'm you know victim of circumstance or crying about you know this problem or that problem but there's like literally none of that you know it's like i don't even think about it i mean it's it's like yeah it might look that way but i'm my intention is to get from point a to point b i'm not really consciously aware of how i'm getting there it might look bad but like it'll eventually kind of even out as it just walk this shit off and 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 there's not the drama there's not the tormenting thoughts of oh i'm a victim oh what if this gets worse oh you know what if what are other people thinking and none of that you know and so you know, that's another thing you can start to do is, you know, asking our creator, infinite intelligence, you know, uh, you know, well, how, how did they experience this? You know, it's like I saw it from from this perspective, but maybe they're in their consciousness. They weren't even aware of what was going on with their body. You know, they, they could have been in the absolute and heavenly realms, you know, hanging out, you know, in the timeless because, you know, it could have been a couple minutes here. They could have spent hundreds of years you know it's like time is not like like a line it doesn't it doesn't really matter you know and so um yeah and so we, we don't really know and so that's another thing you can start to do to start to let go of some of these these thoughts of grief reliving these traumas over and over again you know in these cycles you know and start to move in a direction of healing and and actually um replacing that fear with faith and um, a new understanding, um, higher levels of just peace, you know, so you can just enjoy uh, more and more of the day instead of just, you know, feeling like, you know, despair or whatever. And um, yeah, with that being said, I think I'm gonna bounce. So I appreciate you guys liking, sharing, subscribing, all the social networking things. I also appreciate your spiritual uh, support and your physical support. Um, you know, thank you for that. And until the next now, God bless.